Hello and welcome to Against the Storm version 0.37, the Royal Archaeologist update. In the past, I would go through the patch notes at the beginning of whatever episode was next after a new patch came out, but I felt like with uh, with you know the Steam release a couple weeks ago and um, doing the separate tutorial series and all of this, that it would make more sense to do uh, a separate short episode, you know, five to ten minutes or so, to kind of go through the patch notes and, and uh, also give some commentary on them. And so, um, and then focus the actual episode on the actual gameplay rather than having five to ten minutes at the beginning where it's talking about the patch notes. If you wanted to listen to one and not the other, you could. And it wouldn't be uh, as challenging to find. So uh, the the new update, the Royal Archaeologist update, focuses almost exclusively on the Scarlet Orchard. In the past, the Scarlet Orchard was more orange than scarlet. The ground was kind of orangish. The trees were definitely orangish tin tinted. And uh, um, while it had a heavy copper focus, hence the orange, um, it didn't really fit with the name, the Scarlet Orchard. And it didn't really have anything unique to it. Uh, compared to the other biomes, especially after they introduced the Coral Forest biome and after they did the revamp on the marshlands. And so, speaking of the marshlands, the Scarlet Orchard uh, has also a new mechanic that is kind of in the same vein as the marshlands uh, mechanic, uh, you know, biome-specific mechanic. So let's talk about the, the Scarlet Orchard itself first. Um, the trees are now scarlet. There's some white also, uh, foliage in the trees, but most of the trees are going to be red. Uh, they kind of look a little like poinsettias. And there's also some purple in there too, which might be... Well, I'm not sure what that is exactly. That could be... Um, it could be different trees, or could it be just, just some some just decoration within the trees themselves. I think we'll see that once we actually get to play one uh, uh, town in the Scarlet Orchard, we can actually look at it a little more closely. So, um, otherwise the the like the the copper in the trees is largely unchanged. You still get copper from the trees, and um, most of the rest of the biome is relatively unchanged. Uh, it's really just the visual look of it, except for the new biome-specific mechanic. The biome-specific mechanic is archaeology and exploration. So we're going to get a, a brand new building that is biome-specific called the archaeologist office. Uh, that that office, that building will help you find and excavate some uh, archaeological digs uh, on your on your settlement map. And um, when you unearth those, they will work sort of like a glade event, except uh, they will not have a penalty timer. Um, so you don't have like eight minutes or ten minutes to finish it. Uh, you can finish it however long you want, but they will also have multiple phases, multiple stages. So you'll open up the, you know, you start digging, and then you'll have to do another task to dig some more or to do something else with it. And then eventually you'll end up with a, a, a basically a giant artifact that I believe gives some sort of a benefit to your town. The archaeologist office also is taking advantage of the upgrade uh, mechanic that they added in the last update just before the Steam release called the Mines Update. So how they added the ability to choose between three different upgrades for two different levels of the mine. There are two different up upgrades for each of three different levels on the archaeology uh, archaeologist office. So we're going to have to take a look at those when we actually get to play uh, through. So this, this big archaeological project is kind of like a way of focusing your efforts on a task while also having, you know, the regular task of doing, you know, expanding and, and cooking and, and making different production things. Um, as always, they've also added a bunch of new... Um, changes to the UI and, and user experience, um, many of which are inspired by the community, or perhaps all of which are inspired by the community. Uh, they've gotten a ton of feedback in the last week and a half or so from all the new players on Steam, so they have introduced a lot of changes for that. Uh, some of those changes are you can now copy a building just by pressing, I think it's shift when you're moused over it. 
Uh, you can also rotate a movable building in place without penalty of cost. Uh, so like a, a house, for example, you can rotate in place without having to move it. Um, or you can rotate a, a gathering camp in place too without having to pick it up. Uh, they've added or they've made a couple changes to the Citadel upgrades tree, probably uh, somewhere above where we're where we're at in our series anyway. Um, uh, ore is now on the resource overlay, so that you can you know you can have it there with everything else. Um, they've added some more hotkeys for tree marking, and uh, they've expanded the in-game encyclopedia, the atlas as well. There's, of course, a bunch of bug fixes in here as well, because whenever you have a much larger user base, you have much more bugs found. So let's see a few other changes that we need to talk about specific to the upgrades tree. There's no such thing now as a separate embarkation range and Citadel Vision upgrade. Now they are one. So when you when you add in, when you go to select embarkation range you get the vision range along with it which makes logical sense because if you can move further you need to be able to see further otherwise you would have to block the embarkation range behind the vision range which means the vision range doesn't really give you a whole lot they removed some artifacts and machinery requirements from some of the early upgrades so we may actually get a refund of some of those from from our from our last uh from our last town um hopefully we do and they lowered some prices they moved um they moved some things around a little bit but anytime they change the upgrades tree if it's something they can't just map over they give you a refund so that's really nice that you don't have to suffer for that some world map modifiers have had increased uh rewards given to them so uh, ancient battleground and corrosive torrent both have added machinery as a reward uh, in the base number obviously you're playing at higher difficulties you get more um, infused tools are an option now for upgrading the mine instead of just having to use simple tools yeah shift will clone a building or copy a building rotating a building now by pressing R while hovering over it uh, and, th and the other one to copy you press shift while hovering over it with your mouse you can also hover a building and press M by default to move that building without having to open the UI let's see the uh, alt key now will um, will toggle the marking and unmarking of trees instead of having to click the other button on the UI. And a lot of other minor changes to uh, things like um, uh, some different perks from cornerstones, um, some a lot of wording clarification which is really good. And uh, you can right click on a building in the construction menu to open the Atlas Encyclopedia automatically. That's kind of the strong, the strong UI changes. And I don't think I will go through the bug fixes. I think we'll just leave those uh, as is. Um, I didn't really encounter anything that I would consider a bug when I was when I was um, playing through the first three towns we've done. So uh, hopefully, anything else will be um, will be a you know will be something we wouldn't have noticed anyway. So I think we're going to leave this uh, this little mini episode here. Uh, we're almost at ten minutes, so it's a good a good number. Um, I hope this was interesting to you, especially as it being separate from a regular gameplay episode. I'm going to release this as soon as I can. Um, I'm recording it a little after the update came out, um, but I'll release this as soon as I can, just so that you uh, have it available to you if you're interested. And if you're not, uh, then you can skip these and just watch the let's play. So thank you all for joining me, and I will see you in the let's play. Bye for now.